So, uh, World House Welfare works with local uh, communities to improve the health and welfare of working equity, supporting livelihoods um, of the most vulnerable part of the population. And this talk is going to try to link animal welfare, environment and livelihoods. See how it goes. So, I think that everybody in the world, maybe except Donald Trump, believes that um, carbon dioxide and temperatures are correlated. If you want to check it, you can go to the NASA website. You will see how high is today's carbon dioxide. We crossed the barrier of 400 parts per million uh, in 2015, and we are going up. Yes. So what's going to happen? It's a daunting a scenario where um, temperatures are going to rise between 2 and 6 degrees. We know all that, don't we? So what's going to happen with this? Um, it means that um, we have different rain patterns, we'll have um, climate catastrophes, we'll see how the sea acidification kills big part of the, the biodiversity and this will affect the trophic chain. We'll have vector-borne diseases spreading all over, um, human massive migrations, fights for natural resources. Um, we're already extinguishing life in Earth 10,000 times faster than it should be naturally. So we're doing a pretty good job. Eh? The Anthropocene, some people have already talked about that here. It's happening, it's happening now, it's happening very fast. It's, it's the biggest and the real problem we have now in, uh, in our society. So, well, where these emissions come from? Um, it depends on really on income. Countries with highest incomes, they pollute more, they produce a lot of greenhouse emissions. So, for example, Qatar, they produce 90 tons of um, carbon dioxide equivalent tons per year. The states, some 20. Mali, for example, only 100 kilos per person a year. So the differences are huge. So this would be the world map if we took into account the carbon dioxide emissions. Um, where they, they come from, these emissions? Well, big part, big deal is uh, agricultural and forestry and other land use. And now we'll narrow down to livestock. I'm doing this introduction because you'll see that uh, livestock has been uh, blamed for a lot of these emissions. And many times working equids are in, fitted into livestock. And uh, we'll see how they are completely different, this sort of problem. So uh, FAO source, we have, you can see these big donuts. These big donuts show how much uh, greenhouses produce each region and by different species. You see how, for example, in Africa we have very small donut, and in South America very big one. But why is it so big? Is it so big? Because of the evil ones. Now oh, it doesn't work. Oh, that's, it's working. So yes, livestock long shadow. Um, we have beef and cattle, dairy cattle. So they are guilty of, of, of this in big part. And why? So, no signal. Is it working? Can you see anything? No. Good. So, we have to remember that 80% um, of the arable land in the planet is um, destined to grow food for animals. So, we plant crops of soy and maize or whatever to feed animals, and those animals will feed us. And we have to remember that animals are kind of a very, very poor, efficient factory. So we put 10 units of protein into an animal, they give us back one, if we're lucky. If you look at beef and sheep here in this slide, for example, they are very poor converters. So we feed uh, 100 units of energy and protein to, uh, to beef, and they give us back two or five. So imagine how inefficient are those. Um, and the world meat consumption, so in different colors, here we see how much meat we consume. So high income countries, they consume a lot of meat, too much for their health even. So, and, and the trends show that meat consumption doesn't increase with population, but it increases more with income. So, yes, we are every time more people in the world, but we because the generally the the so the 
the wealth of the population is increasing, so they will attend to it by even more meat, which is causing this problem of land use, basically. If we compare the environmental costs on your side, you see one side, the green one, is plant-based. The three colors, the three columns, they show land use, fresh, fresh water consumption, and uh, greenhouse gases. So you can see all the plant-based columns are very low, and you can see on the other side, the animal-based columns are very high. It means that to produce um, energy, to produce food for us through animals is really inefficient and really polluting. That's why China, what did they do two years ago? So two days ago, two, sorry, two years ago, they decided to cut their meat production by 50%. So, to fight climate change and pollution. It was a big step, and China decided that when the meat per, um, consumption was something like 60 kilos per person a year, so half of what an average uh, Northern American would eat. But well, this is the part. So this was an introduction to get to this point, um, because working equities are a different scenario. They tend to be included in uh, as a livestock, and this is not correct. So, the, for example, they are not bred in herds, so they don't put the water. They often they eat leftovers or marginal plants from non-arable lands, so they have no impact. The foresting, destroying forests, and destroying biodiversity. Um, all over the world, there are 100 more than 100 million um, horses, donkeys, and mules that support more than 600 million people. Um, with the minimum environmental impact. And this should be recognized. This should be further studied. And, and it is already been studied. So the, for the first time, the OIE, they, they created the, an animal, um, the terrestrial animal health code. And for the first time, they recognized how important they are equities for human livelihoods. They support them, they support us, basically, and transporting people to the markets, very important in many countries, transporting goods and feed for livestock, this was Ethiopia, they transport water, and every time water is farther away, so with climate change the resources get further. So they are crucial in emergency situations where no other cars, no other vehicles can come in, buffaloes and horses, donkeys, mules, they can help people. Um, and life without, I think they took this one in Kenya. Could be Kenya that? Um, life without working equities is, is very tough. Uh, Ethiopian, Ethiopian farmers, they say that if a farmer has no donkey, becomes a donkey himself. And you have to carry all the stuff yourself and life gets much harder. Especially for women, children, which a lot of times are responsible to fetch water and, and wood, etc. And the OIE chapter also mentions a bit the impact, the positive impact on the environment, um, but this definitely should be first further studied because I think it's crucial. I'm going to go really fast through the what, what's this chapter about. Um, so the OIE describes, that it works around the five freedoms, we all know about them, and it describes who has responsibilities on the coin welfare. So governments, universities, charities, we all should be working together to break the invisibility of working equities um, and uh, to, to give them some minimum acceptable welfare and health so they can have a dignifying life and help us. So also the OIE says, tell us how to measure welfare so we can focus on behavior, on the body condition. This is a very thin horse, as you can see. This is quite often to find. And they tell us to focus on different disease signs. And also it's important to measure welfare, focusing on morbidity and mortality and how we handle animals. So horses depend on us and so we inflict a lot of mistreatments and misdriving and whippings and Horrible traditional practices like, for example, splitting, slitting nostrils or cutting ears or other kind of mutilations that we should control lameness. A lot of them are affected by lameness. And at the end of the day, um, we have a, an, equ an equine which is fit to work or not. And we, our equine is not fit to work, um, it's suffering and also cannot help human life, support human livelihoods. 
So, and finally, the OIE also gives us some recommendations. So, we have to provide them water and food with a minimum of quality and quantity and a shelter good enough. And uh, we have to be careful with diseases. A lot of them are zoonotic diseases affecting also humans. Um, they give us also recommendations on how to handle and, and the horses. So a lot of um, practices we do to them, how we keep them isolated or how we, we use ropes around them. Around them. Uh, this photo, in fact, the one we see with the donkey, the back of the donkey, I took it in Kenya. This donkey escaped and, and stepped on somebody's, on the neighbor's uh, rice plot. So the neighbor took his machete and attacked the donkey. So we can see all these sort of practices all over the world. Also, the end of life is important. We should give them a dignifying end of life. This one is from Senegal. This, this uh, horse died of a strychnine. So I insisted to put it down because it was suffering. And the vet didn't tell me that he only had a strychnine. So he had a horrible death. So this one. Um, also, it's important to to know how much and how heavy can a horses work, appropriate workloads. And right, and we arrive to this point. Just bear with me a moment. So, um, uh, let's focus on the, on the environment and working equids. Oop, yes, here we are. Um, this is something that should be further studied, and it's, I think it's paramount. So why horses are used? We have seen all the uses of horses. They are essential to support human livelihoods. Do you think they can be substituted by vehicles? No, I don't think so. In many contexts, we have uh, not enough roads. They are very expensive to make roads, and that, that, uh, the, the terrain is very difficult. And also, vehicles are very expensive, so that's a very difficult. Um, but if they were substituted by vehicles, so that would represent an additional problem to the environment. So an average car costs to make some 10 tons of carbon dioxide, and it will produce some 20 extra tons every 100,000 kilometers. Uh, maybe one day uh, electric cars will, uh, will, will help us with this. Um, but, and also, uh, we have to remember that making a road, it costs something like, uh, it represents something like half a million tons per kilometer. So it's, it's a matter of economics and it's a matter of also of environment. So we have to recognize, I'm not saying that uh, they should be working, but if they are working, if uh, there is no other option, we have to provide donkeys and horses and mules with um, enough quality of life. Yes, um, I'm finishing. So, um, and now let's talk about also about greenhouse emissions of, of um, working equids. Remember that they are not livestock. So an average working horse, they tend to be quite small. So they, they produce roughly 10 kilos of methane per year, which is a fifth of the average cow. Um, so they are 10, 10 kilos of methane per year, something like 250 kilos of um, carbon dioxide, uh, dioxide equivalent. It's not a lot. And they eat, another important thing is that they tend to eat leftovers. They tend to eat marginal grasses that are not um, grown by humans. So we didn't put any energy input, oil input, into grow. Um, crops to feed animals. They eat grass that grows naturally. So they don't, they don't promote deforestation. Nobody plants, of course, in, in other sport horses and some context, yes, but generally nobody grows um, cereals to feed horses, working horses. So, and also because of that, they don't have, there is no associated cost of the industry transporting this food and transforming this food. Um, also, horses, equid, sorry, um, they produce no, da no lateral damage. So we said already that we need no roads practically, or lesser roads. They don't have an oil service. Um, 
so the, uh, all the environmental costs associated with um, vehicles is not in, in the donkeys and horses and mules. Um, and as they say in Ethiopia also, they have a lot of um, old sayings in Ethiopia. They, they say that uh, if you don't know where you live, donkeys do, and, uh, but cars they don't either. So this is not an important thing. Um, this is my, we're finishing already. Also, sorry, thank you very much. Um, carbon cycle is, is not affected by non-fossil fuels. So emissions of horses will be partially buried in the oceans and inland, partially taken by plants that will be eaten by animals again. So remember that plants and animals are a carbon sink. This is why we have oil today. So the real problem with livestock is land use. So we have this 80% of land that we use to grow food for animals. And this is a very, as we said, very inefficient way to feed ourselves. If we add less meat, then we would have a lot of more forest, preserved forest for the wild animals, and we could preserve biodiversity. So this is something we have to take into account. Um, just finally, conclusions. So working equities uh, support livelihoods worldwide. Now OIE and FAO, they regulate that, they recognize that. And we have to remember that equities have an important role in climate change and mitigation. And necessarily, this is a very new thing because, as I said before, they tend to be included in livestock and working equities are very different and they have very different uh, impact. So we need to further study the work output. They have to further study how, what are their real emissions, which is completely un unknown. And finally, we have to have the OIE and the FA FAO um, further recognizing um, the role of working equities in climate change mitigation. So thank you, that's it. Thank you very much for your time.